Hi, it's Dave. One of Warren Buffett's famous investment philosophies can be summed up as investing within your circle of competence. In this video, I'm going to be taking a deeper look into this concept, examining the pros and cons, and seeing how we can use it for our advantage in investing. All right, so first off, as usual, all of my videos are a stream of consciousness. I share what I'm thinking in real time. Sometimes I look into investment philosophies like this video. Other times I might do company analysis or just look at news events. But everything I do, I'm trying to take a deeper look, trying to get into the essence of things. So what is a circle of competence and how does it relate to investing? This concept of circle of confidence um, was made popular or famous by Warren Buffett. In a 1996 shareholder letter, he says, what an investor needs is the ability to correctly evaluate selected businesses. You don't have to be an expert on every company or even many. You only have to be able to evaluate companies within your circle of competence. The size of the circle is not very important. Knowing its boundaries, however, is vital. Also, Charlie Munger, uh, Buffett's business partner, also said, you have to figure out where you where you've got an edge and you've got to play within your own circle of competence the size of the circle is not very important however knowing its boundaries is vital and so this idea of a circle of competence has become a centerpiece or one of the most important ideas in warren buffett's investing approach and i believe it really helped buffett early on in his investing Buffett, he felt very comfortable understanding certain businesses, for example, the business of insurance. And by having a circle of competence around insurance and understanding the ins and outs of what an insurance company is, its risks, and how it makes money, this led Warren Buffett to make his best investment ever, which was in Geico. Also, Warren Buffett felt he could understand like businesses like Coke or Seas Candy or Carpet or Railroads, etc., and in a lot of ways, it helped Warren Buffett from making big mistakes, getting to areas that he just didn't understand and taking too big risks. And this consistency over the years and decades has become one of Warren Buffett's advantages, especially early on. However, um, if you contrast this to some other people who might have been tempted to speculate on areas that they didn't really understand, and that would make them prone to more mistakes. And if they made a big mistake and invested a large sum of money, a large percentage in a, in a speculative play they just didn't understand, they, and they lost all that money, it would take a, quite a long time to recover. And because... <clears throat> Buffett adopted this philosophy of a circle of competence, meaning invest only in your circle of competence. This major tenet of his investment philosophy has in a way kind of protected him and given him the consistency that he has experienced. However, I think when we look at this circle of competence, a lot of people will just take it as face value and they won't really critically analyze it. But in my opinion, I think there are major pros and major cons to this idea. First, I want to take a look at some of the cons. I think for a lot of people, it can be tempting to speculate on a new company that you just don't understand just because others are speculating as well. For example, there might be a drug company and you've read rumors that they've got something great in the pipeline, but you really don't know much about that industry or that sector or that drug. And you don't really understand what they're doing or the technology behind it. And you might get lucky a few times by betting and you can be tempted to invest actually too much into something that you don't really understand. And by doing so, you actually increase um, risk a lot and you increase the possibility of losing a lot of money and it being um, difficult or taking a long time to recover. I think oftentimes today, investing has become so momentum, momentum driven that people think that they don't need a circle of competence. In other words, why do I need to understand a company or its technologies? I'm just going to follow the hot names, right? And I'm just going to follow what all the people on, you know, this website or this YouTube channel, et cetera, you know, what they're investing in. And in some ways it becomes kind of like mob investing. People just all crowd together and go into a name just because it's a hot name. And I think actually there can be some validity to this, you know, because as more people buy into a stock, right, that's more demand and it can increase the, the price of the stock. And perhaps there can be money made out of that, especially if you know what you're doing. But I'm not sure if you can consistently 10x or 100x your investments in a reasonable amount of time by doing kind of mob investing. I think um, in its essence, the circle of competence kind of goes against the blind betting mentality, kind of the whole lottery 
approach or horse betting approach where you're just throwing money at just random you know horses or random sports teams trying to get a thrill on betting and i think that's kind of the concept that warren buffett was fighting in kind of in response to kind of the whole speculative nature the shallow nature of the market warren buffett kind of needed a theory and investment philosophy that he called circle of competence to kind of battle that um <clears throat> i think people in in some ways do need a circle of competence and it's the way i kind of define it is these are areas and industries that you really understand and that you understand clearly now everyone's circle of competence is going to be different and that's okay for example one of my areas uh, in my circle of competence is that I use my multi, multi, multidisciplinary background to assess the clarity and depth of the management's thinking and strategy of a company. For example, I love to listen to founder interviews or CEO interviews, and I'm asking my um, the question, I'm trying to dive deeper into what is their key insight? What is the CEO or founder seeing that others aren't seeing? And what are they believing more deeper than others and how deep do those values and beliefs really go? I, I dive into how clear their thinking and how clear their strategies are. What is their motivation, right? Um, kind of a, a, a funny side story is sometimes um, there'll be times where my wife is, let's say, uh, talking to or kind of shopping for interviewing an agent, let's say a real estate agent or let's say a lawyer for an issue or problem or an accountant or some, some professional, right? And Sometimes I'll interview as well, but um, just today, my wife was talking to somebody um, and she was talking to three or four people over the whole afternoon. I was kind of overhearing it. And immediately, I want to say immediately, after like 10 or 15 minutes, like I get a really deep sense of whether the person really knows what they're talking about or whether they don't know what they're talking about. And it might seem like, you know, kind of I'm discounting the person by making a quick judgment, but in a sense, I'm actually assessing a lot of things from multi angles, like dozens of angles to come up with this kind of intuitive feel of how deeply I really um, sense that they know their stuff or not. So just today, you know, um, my wife was talking to someone um, interviewing. I'm like, oh man, that lawyer doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> and then um, after and then after the, she got off the phone and she's like, really? And then she's like, yeah, actually, maybe not. And then there's another lawyer. I'm like, wow, that guy actually knows what he's talking about. And then she's like, yeah, that, that guy just had the best feel. And I'm not perfect in the sense of really judging perhaps, you know, their entire kind of thinking, et cetera. But I'm actually very, very good at that. And this is one of the kind of the areas of competence that I've kind of grown at is able to 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 see a person's thinking, how deep it is, how clear it is, like how well they know their stuff, et cetera. Um, I think when looking at an area of competence or a circle of competence, one also needs to adapt into new areas and continue to add to one circle of competence. For example, some people, they don't look at finances and they think like, oh, it's too complicated. But I think there's a level where if you can look at finances, you look at accounting, you don't need to know perhaps as much as an accountant, but if you know the basics and can really understand an income statement, you can understand you know cash flows, can understand a balance sheet, et cetera, that's a great advantage that you can have as a circle of competence where you can actually analyze the financial side of a company. Um, and I think a lot of times people are just closed off. They think, oh, I just can't do it, right? Um, and I think in a sense, that's where Warren Buffett also fell into um, a hole or kind of a, a, a stuck place. See, Warren Buffett over the years, I think was kind of slow in adapting and gaining new areas of competence to add to a circle of competence. For example, over the years, Warren Buffett has been well known to be kind of closed off to technology in a sense that he's said many times in past interviews over the past few decades that technology is just outside of his area of competence and he just doesn't want to you know, touch it. Even though more recently, right, Berkshire has been accumulating big positions, right, in, in various tech companies like Apple, etc. However, um, I think actually the area of technology should have been an area that Warren Buffett 
um, should have been more open to exploring and to adapt it as an area of competence. I think in Warren Buffett's mind, he thought computers, oh, I don't even you know, know how to work it. It's just so mind-boggling, the internet, et cetera. I didn't even you know, uh, use the internet much, et cetera, back in the day. And he felt like it was something that it was optional for him to understand or not. However, I think there are certain times and certain things that happen in history that it's not optional to understand or not, and especially as an investor. And in my opinion, I think um, the te uh, that technology, computers, the internet, and also artificial intelligence, these are areas that are so big and drastic and significant in its impact in society that I think it's actually not optional. And I think that was probably one of the biggest mistakes that Warren Buffett made in the past probably 20, 30 years was to consider technology an option, right, to understand it and to bring it into the area circle of competence or not. So one of the questions is, so how can you start understanding technology and how can you un bring technology into your circle of competence? I'll share a few thoughts here. Well, I personally, I grew up in Silicon Valley and technology was integrated into my life. Um, and it was not scary at all in a lot of ways. My mom actually, she um, ended up like, going to um, community college when I was in elementary school. Uh, she was like a teacher abroad and she, um, she actually, you know, at my uh, dad's prodding, she decided to study computers. And she actually got a, a job eventually at Intel, uh, working as a computer program. And she would bring back or bring home, like I remember when I was maybe in sixth grade or so, she brought home an Intel computer, right, that they gave to her at a, at a huge discount. And we were playing games on this early computer. And, and in high school, we were able to see the beginnings of the internet. And we had like a 14K modem, like you can download just basic, super, you know, slow stuff. But I was able to catch the vision of the technology. And into college, I was able to understand computers, the technology, like internet, et cetera, on a higher level. And I didn't get intimidated by the details per se. I remember back in high school, actually, I was trying to learn like coding, what my high school actually offered a course, but I was terrible at it. And I hated the whole essence of coding and what it what it meant but um on the flip side i could understand technology on a bigger scope and so that kind of was um my compensation in 2008 steve jobs announced the app store so this is one year after he announced the iphone and people had the iphone out um, they were using it but they there wasn't a, an app store to download apps um, when steve jobs announced the app store in early 2008 i told my wife that we needed to make an app because this was the biggest opportunity ever and she was like well we don't even know how to program we know nothing about apps right she's like and that was kind of the mental block for her right how can we make an app how can we start something if we don't know anything about it but for me that wasn't the point it wasn't important whether we knew how to make an app or whatever i just didn't care the point was this was a, a humongous opportunity it was um, a generational opportunity in a sense and i understood that apps were going to be the next big thing and i used that motivation to kind of force myself in a sense to understand the technology behind it. So since 2008, I've actually been running an independent app company and I manage a team of developers. And during those that process, I've had to understand everything we're doing kind of on a high level. Like I'm not a coder per se, and I don't understand per se the actual code on a code line specific you know way, but I understand why we're using certain databases, why we're using certain APIs and services. I understand the pros and cons of different approaches. And it's largely because that's my standard. I know I need to understand that. And so I ask questions. I ask my developers, why are we doing this way, this instead of this way, right? And I actually get into some of the troubleshooting um, of like, why, why don't we use this database or this service, et cetera. And we, by doing that, I'm able to understand the high level concepts of you know, what we're doing, the pros and cons of different approaches. And so even though I'm not into the code line, like level of coding, et cetera, I actually understand like software. I understand how it works because I understand the bigger picture and the bigger ideas behind it. And I'm a big believer actually that this is a interesting hack. And the hack is you might not be technologically savvy per se, and code by itself might just be a huge mental block and it might just throw you off. And rather than making the conclusion that 
A, I can't understand technology in, at all, and technology is outside my circle of competence. Rather than doing this, I want to challenge you actually to do the opposite. Say, it's not an option for technology to not be inside my circle of competence, considering this is probably the biggest revolution, industrial revolution are in the history of the world, what's going on with computers, internet, AI, robotics, etc. Um, I need to understand this stuff, right? And rather than trying to force yourself to understand the line code, like the super technical details, give yourself some slack on the technical details, but rather have a high standard of, of being able to understand and to seek out the high level concepts to understand what's really going on. Like, um, what is machine learning? What is AI? What is neural networks? And in my opinion, I think actually it's very possible and it's actually a great challenge. And I'm actually um, proof of what of this, that this can work, that you don't really have to go into the technical details of everything, but you can still understand the concepts and be and incorporate technology, the internet, even AI into your circle of competence. Um, now, this is just my opinion, but I think actually with machine learning AI, um, that it's extremely important to bring this into one circle of competence. Now, some people may disagree with me and they go, oh yeah, AI and whatever machine learning, I can never understand. This is not in my circle of competence, but there are basic ideas of how neural nets work, what they are that I think anyone can understand with the right teaching. Now, here's the problem is a lot of people who are teaching this stuff are too technical. They're too specific in the sense that they're not teaching it simply and clearly enough. But if you find the right teacher who is able to really teach it to you like you know, a first grader, then you can really understand what a neural net is, what machine learning is. You can understand how AI is progressing and how AI really is becoming probably the biggest industrial revolution of, of our time ever. And how AI is still in the early innings. We're still in like the first inning of AI. And this will open up a lot of understanding of what will happen in society, what will happen in government, business, and our individual lives in the future, because in a lot of way, technology, the internet, and especially AI will play a huge role in what will happen. Now, I know that some of this might sound overwhelming, that, oh man, Dave's trying to say that we need to know tech and AI and all this stuff. But okay, I wanna share a couple hacks that might make it a bit easier. Um, and these are just some hacks that I've developed over the times, over the time, over time. So if you find someone who, you don't understand what they're saying. Let's say you're diving into machine learning or neural nets, and it's just way too complicated, right? You just don't understand like the speaker or whoever's teaching. Then first off, don't blame yourself. It's possible and probably likely that the person who's talking doesn't really understand it as clearly as they should. If someone understands something super clearly, they're able to usually express it in a super simple, clear way, right? And oftentimes the people who say things in a convoluted, complicated way, the problem is with them, not with you actually. So find someone who can teach you the concepts in a super simple manner. manner. So like start with like, for example, what is AI? What is a neural net? Like just super basic concepts and try to find someone who is super clear. Maybe you just need to do a YouTube search and go through dozens of interviews and find the person who's really, you know, super simple and clear and go as deep as that person can take you. Now, sometimes the person can't take you that deep because they only have like one video or sometimes they can take you to 10 videos. If you get stuck along the way or if you run out of stuff, then try to find someone else, right? And to get unstuck in a sense and to find and to go deeper in that sense. Now, one example is of, of this in action is what Elon Musk did with electric cars. You see, with electric cars and also with autonomy, I think Elon actually mentored a lot of people. See, people didn't necessarily have to read a ton of books on the fine details and technicalities of electric motors and lithium ion batteries and all this stuff because they could just learn it from Elon because he had dozens, if not you know, hundreds of interviews that are out there where he explained these basic concepts in a super simple manner that anyone could understand. And it's because Elon Musk had clarity. He understood these concepts truly in a in a, in a deep um, manner that he was able to really share um, simply. So in a sense, it was a shortcut that allowed people to understand things much quicker, right? Because they were able to find someone like Elon Musk who was able to teach to them um, faster.
Now, another shortcut is the ability to read quickly. I've got a playlist um, on my site and channel, and it's on how to read super fast. I've done about three or four videos on this topic. And I believe this is a hugely underrated skill, and it's not a typical speed reading kind of techniques that I teach people. Rather, the essence of what I'm kind of teaching in reading super fast is when you open up a book, you need to find, I think, the trunk and the branches of that trunk as soon as possible, meaning the trunk is the main argument and the branches are you know, the main sub-arguments of what the book is saying. Um, every book is centered around one argument, right? one thesis, and you need to find that trunk and the branches as soon as possible and everything else will fit in that tree. And if you're able to really grasp this idea of reading that way, I think it will revolutionize your reading and your speed of, re of reading. For me personally, it's probably like, I think at least 10x, I mean more, more than 10x because it would take me forever to read a book. Like I hated reading in high school, but now I could you know pick up a, a, a typical business book, maybe 200 pages and read it within 30 minutes. And it's, it's not because, you know, for example, I'm so much smarter or, or have so much abilities that other people can't have per se. A lot of it is, actually a learned skill of how to intake that much information quickly. Um, now, I know there's going to be resistance to this, but already I'm getting some great feedback on these videos. Some people have been DMing me and replying to me on Twitter saying that they've been following actually, you know, these videos and suggestions I give, and they've already 2x or not 3x their, their reading speed in just a, a matter of a month or so. All right, so here's another uh, tip. Now, you might not be able to understand technology or AI, machine learning, et cetera, better than some people, because some people are just like technologically minded, right? They're just into that stuff. And you might not be, you might be more geared to humanities, right? It's human psychology, et cetera, and that's fine. So you can make it up by understanding the other side of technology and AI, AI namely its adoption. So here's the idea, technology, AI, all this stuff can be in a sense cold and sterile because it's technology, right? It, it doesn't have like, it's, there's no humanness to it in a sense. Um, but as an investor, it's important to, to understand how certain technologies and products get adopted. So in other words, how businesses form around business model, what drives demand, why people buy the things they do, why the people use the, thing, the things they do. And it's a lot about human psychology and mass behavior. And I think when you add this whole field that's kind of is almost as important or more important than understanding the technical side of technology is understanding the human side and the economic side of technology. This you can add also to your circle of competence. So it kind of outweighs any kind of uh, weakness you have in the technical side. Personally, I'd rather have a more balanced approach where I might not know as much about technology as some technology, technologists per se, but I compensate it because I understand the other side of how it's adopted in the human side and the economic side and the business side of technology greater. And the combination of that is an amazing, uh, has amazing potential. One of the concepts I've, sh I've shared in this video, in this uh, channel, I'll share more, is the concept of crossing the chasm. See, when you have a technology, a tech a tech product, a new product, new technology. Early adopters of that new technology will sacrifice a lot because they're so excited about that, te that technology. So it doesn't have to be the most convenient thing or the most cheapest thing, but because the early adopters will still love it because it's new technology. And the problem though is most of these companies and products never really cross the chasm, never really make it to mainstream, to the normal public, because the mainstream customer is a completely different animal. So it can, completely different customer. They need things simple. They need a whole product that's just easy to use and it needs to be a complete no-brainer. The best example I think in recent history is the iPhone. It's like the iPhone was the ultimate kind of crossing the chasm product. Before you had these smartphones that were difficult to use, they would crash and people were like, why are you using that, etc. The iPhone was the first kind of product in that whole industry, which was like a no-brainer. It was like, it was so simple to use and it was so compelling in its value. And I think in a lot of ways, if you can gain a construct of how products can cross the chasm and can gain an edge of, and you can get, and you can gain an edge in joining 
your ability with to understand tech with the ability to understand the human and business side, then I think as an investor, you have a huge advantage. And I'll share more about this in future videos. All right, um, I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please go ahead and like it. Subscribe to my channel for um, any future um, videos like this. On my channel, we're looking at investment topics. We're looking at company analysis. We're looking at news and different items from different angles. Always trying to ask deeper questions and look at it from you know, different angles, trying to get to the essence of things. All my videos are also found in a podcast. Uh, just look for Dave Lee on investing in your favorite podcast player. And lastly, I'm on Twitter. I'm active there and my handle there is HeyDave7. All right, we'll see you guys in my next video. Thanks.